Hey guys, so this video I'm going to talk a little bit about how I go about organizing my jujitsu, both for like how I fight and also how I go about developing my game. Okay, so the first thing to understand is how I view positions, right? I do jujitsu where like every position is like a different mini game, right? So for example, you can be really good at like a close grip. You can be really good at like fighting from closed guard on bottom and setting up like arm triangles, arm bars, but then really bad at escaping the 50-50, right? They're completely different skill sets, right? So all jujitsu really is to me, it's just a combination of multiple mini games, right? So, um, you know, you're trying to always drive the match to the position you're good at. A lot of people are looking for these like broad overarching principles that connect everything together, but I find that's really hard to do because you'll hear people say things like, always have your elbows tight or always have posture. But there's a lot of times in the guard that I'll have my arms completely straight. So a lot of times I have posture, there's a lot of times I have my head down and everything is very dependent on the position you're in. So ultimately what I try to do is I try to get good at each of these individual positions. And then when I'm in that position, I have my certain set of like things that would define a win or loss in that position. Okay, so let's look at how this works in the context of an actual match, right? So go ahead and stand up. So we'll focus primarily on guard right now. So basically the first position mini battle that happens is the grip fight, right? So we have no grips. I'm trying to establish a control or a guard that I'm good at playing. Even if I attack directly from here, right? This is a position, right? So from here, I'm trying to establish a guard I'm good at playing and he's trying to establish a passing position that he's good at finishing, right? So maybe I get like a sleeve, I fall back and get a lasso or something, right? And then I start building my game from here. So if I'm really good at this position and I go here, there's like a battle going on here. Either I'm better at sweeping or submitting from here, or he's better at passing or escaping, right? Uh, also, you can transition position, right? So I'm looking to sweep, submit, or transition. So if he grabs th this pants, for example, and now I'm here, I can develop on the double sleeve. And I use this a lot to dictate how I do my training. So I may be doing specific rounds where I start from here, he wins if he gets out, I win if I sweep, submit, or if I get double sleeve, now it's like another position we can build on, right? I could start from the double sleeve and I win if I sweep, submit, he wins if he passes or gets out of the position, right? But then if I go underneath and I switch to say the X guard position, well now I can build off of this, right? And I can isolate this as a separate game. So ultimately all the match is, is a, a consistent like, if you view it like a war, it's like you have a battle line, right? You win one battle, you progress forward. You lose one battle, you progress backwards. In general, if you win three or four battles in a row, you're going to end up winning the match. So maybe the match starts, you start in your guard, you establish spider guard. You sweep the guy, right? Now you're on top in whatever guard he established, maybe De La Hiva, right? I win that battle with a knee cut, now I'm in side control. If I win one more battle, maybe I'm in mount. If I win one more, it's probably a submission or taking the back. And you see how that works. You just keep progressing. So realistically, when I'm fighting, I'm not really looking ahead. I'm just thinking about what positional battle I'm in and what's the next step to win that battle, right? And of course, what wins that battle will be different for different people, right? If, if you have no X guard, transitioning to X guard isn't really a win for you. But if you know your X guard is your best position, then that's an upgrade. Uh, tactics and strategies are kind of a big thing, right? So tactics are the positions that you play. So, you know, how good your spider guard is, how good your daily Hiva guard is, how good your X guard is, how good your triangle choke finishes. All those things are like the tactics you have, they're like the tools in your arsenal, right? Strategy is how you choose to implement them. And that can vary depending on who you fight, right? So you may fight a guy and he's got a really good guard, so you don't wanna go in his guard. So you know in that match, it's more useful to try to play your guards that have good submissions, like a collar sleeve game or a double sleeve game or closed guard. So maybe you're fighting a guy who's really good at defending submissions and he just won't tap for anything. And in that case, maybe sweeping would be a better option, right? So you need to like always be using positional training to develop the positions you're good at, and then you choose what tool to be using at the right time, depending on the situation, you know? You may be super tired and like your grips are burnt out, right? And like you can't hold any any sleeve grip, even if it's your best position. So then maybe you have to use daily Hiva for a minute and just like kind of wrap the leg with your arm and then try to push them off with your hand for that, that time being, right? So you need to really break out of this mindset of like, this is my game. I always do this, this, and this. And think more in terms of these are the positions I'm good at and then choose the position that is most useful and available for the situation. You can't be chasing positions uh, that aren't there. If the guy's on both knees, uh, you know, I can't play daily Hiva. I need to do like a butterfly, a collar sleeve, a double sleeve, something like that to attack the guy to get him to stand up to then grab the ankle and play daily Hiva. So another concept to understand is that the positions that you're good at will largely dictate what you do. So if you're brand new in jiu-jitsu and you don't know any positions at all, uh, or you know like only the closed guard, it's really hard to have like an entire full match, right? An analogy I like to think of is like if everything is a different game, 
it's like you're playing a game where you know you have 10 board games you have like chess backgammon checkers and like a few other ones and you don't know the rules for any of those games right so you're trying to get good by playing all those games but you can only play one for 30 seconds at a time so you play chess for 30 seconds then you play checkers and then you play backgammon it's really hard to get good what realistically what you should do is spend like you know a week or two learning to play chess decent then learn to play backgammon and then learn to play checkers and then when you put them all together you'll be able to do it but if you're trying to develop your positions by kind of like fighting in one position and then suddenly it changes suddenly it changes it's really hard to get good so you isolate these things right so then when i'm fighting you know once i've developed different skill sets in these different positions i can make decisions in the match right so stand up so if I know I have a good Last of Spider game, I have a good Daily Heva game, I have a good Collar Guard game, go ahead and like, yeah, like this, then what I can do is very different, right? I know that if I can just get a sleeve and come here, I know how to lasso and engage him, and I can build offense from this. But if you have no guard game developed based off of controlling a sleeve, well, it's not a very useful tool for you, right? So maybe you only have Collar Guard stuff. Okay, so you have to build off of a Collar Drag, an Ankle Pick maybe, to jump the Daily Heva, right? But again, even jumping the Daily Heva, it's only useful if I'm good at the daily heave position, right? But if you specific train this position, you know what to do here. You know, okay, he grabs, I get the sleeve, I break, I can go to sit up guard, I can go low guard, can go daily heave X. You know, if, if you have a good position there, then you know what to do, right? So ultimately what I try to do is I try to use uh, regular rep matches or regular rounds where you start with like no specific training. That kind of dictates uh, what I need to work on. So maybe I'll do a regular round and I establish my spider guard and the guy gets out really quick, right? Well, then I'm gonna go into specific training later and be like, okay, how did that guy get out? And I'm gonna specific train that specific spot, right? Because ultimately, all a regular match is is a combination of all of those mini games, right? So when you go into a match and you just start to see everything as like, okay, this is the first mini battle, right? You either sweep, submit, or transition position to like a better position, right? If you transition to X guard, right, and then you lose it there, you know you need to do specific training on X guard and you build like that. A lot of people I see make the mistake of they almost try to build like a flow chart to like forward how they're gonna go or like, like they're trying to look ahead. The thing is ultimately you can't really look ahead in jujitsu because you don't know what the guy's gonna do next, right? So if I'm trying to build, okay, first thing I do is spider guard, then I do this, right? Well, stand up. If he comes at me and he has his hands back and he's coming forward with his legs, like kind of like low does, yeah, that look back. Yeah, if he's coming at me like this and he keeps his hands away, it's really hard, right? I need to, maybe I gotta do the collar or a single leg game. You have to build off of that, right? Or maybe you really like to play Daily Heba on this side and he leads with that left leg and he's coming at me more like this and that's really hard. So then I have to build off of this side and, and build from there. Also, when you're doing the specific training to like upgrade your positions, you really need to be extremely specific, right? So stand up. So a lot of people might think of something like uh, just X guard, right? <clears throat> so you could be here like an X guard with this underhook, right? But I could be here like with a single leg X. I could, I could have an overhook grip like this. It's very different. This left foot could be on the hip. It could be here on the near side. Turn this way a little bit, right? It could be on the near side like this. I could be on the far side, right? This right hand could be on the pants over here. Right? I could be on the pants here. I could come down a little bit. I could already have the collar and be building off of this, which can be useful to push them out and like start launching attacks from there, right? So, you know, I try to like not only just go, oh, we're specific training from the guard or even from spider guard. I identify if I'm rolling and I get to the X guard position and I have his collar and I'm really struggling in that spot, I'll do specific training where we start and we do like five minutes of rolling. I start with this grip and the collar and we're very specific. If he breaks the collar grip or we get out of that kind of area of rolling, we stop and go back to it. So you get very, very specific. Try to think about like a brand new person who comes into jujitsu, like they know nothing, right? Often most people, the way they learn is they come in, they'll maybe learn a basic arm bar and triangle choke. That's the only thing they know. And then, they, then they'll be put into a regular match. So then they start standing. They have no idea what to do. They don't know any takedowns. They don't know anything. So then they're just basically going crazy. It's not really uh, useful to roll in that manner. So when I take someone brand new, what I'll do is I teach them the basics of finishing a triangle choke. Then they start in the triangle choke and then we start dealing with issues like, oh, maybe the guy tries to pull his elbow back and it's hard to finish. Maybe he gets posture. And we'll do sparring from that position. So they're actually getting useful feedback with resistance in somewhere that they're good at, or somewhere that they know what to do. If you're all over the place without ideas of what you're working on, it's not a very efficient way to train. So as you get better and you know more positions, then when you do a regular match, it's a lot easier because you know every every aspect of the game, I have a plan, right? Like right here, I'm like, okay, look for the sleeve and get a lasso. That's what I like to do. He keeps the sleeve away. Okay, I'm going for the collar guard. 
I could I could collar drag, ankle pick, or I could switch to De La Hiva, right? Boom, I go to De La Hiva. I know I'm really good here. I'd like to get the sleeve first once I'm in this position because I like to go to sit up guard. If he keeps the sleeve away, then I like to build off of the collar game, right? I know how to play from here. If he tries to control this leg, I start pulling and pushing him out and start going for a bolo, right? I can build my bolo game. I could try to turn this into a sweep depending on what he does, right? Now we're on top. He goes to a lasso, right? Now we're building from the lasso series, right? He doesn't have the double sleeve yet, so it's a lasso without the double sleeve, right? So then if he gets the double sleeve, now I'm passing this position and I isolate all these things down. So eventually, if you do that for a long period, you start to know what to do in every situation. So when I'm rolling, all I'm doing is just switching game to a new game, to a new game, to a new game, and I know what to do in each one. All right, guys, so I started off with this video just trying to do how, to, how I organize my jiu-jitsu, and I kind of realized it's a way bigger topic than I, want, than I could actually do in one video. So uh, let me know your guys' questions you want, like as far as going about organizing your jiu-jitsu, how to develop your training and stuff like that. I'm gonna do a few more videos on this as well. Um, but there's like, there's so much depth to it, right? There's like tournament strategy, there's how to do your actual training, how to push your conditioning and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, yeah, I just want to interact with you guys to try to build off of that. Uh, also, um, you know, for the smaller details that come up, it's way easier to get some things in like little one minute clips and stuff. And so follow me on Instagram at John Thomas BJJ, cause I post a lot of stuff on there. Okay guys, if you guys like the channel, please, the best way you can help is like, share and subscribe. Thanks a lot.